I've got a feeling this video is going to be well viewed. I'm here at Tornos in Moutier in Switzerland. I'm standing in front of a multi-spindle machine. This is the multi-Swiss range. I'm with Bryce here and he's going to tell us a little bit about how this machine's made up. Uh, firstly, what's the model of this one that we're, we're standing in front of? So we're standing in front of a multi-Swiss 6x32, so 6 spindle and 32mm max diameter for the and it's great to see the machines like this because yeah, it yeah. really shows you how the machines put together. Firstly, let's talk about uh, the spindles here um, and obviously the, the, where, where the tools are housed. Can you give us a little bit of an overview as to what we've got here? Yeah, sure. So we've got six spindles here in the, in the barrel, seven with the counter spindle, of course. The, the main characteristic of, the, of those spindles is that we have hydrostatic bushing in the front. So we have a standard uh, ball bearings in the back. Of the, of the spindle and an hydrostatic bushing in the front. So therefore the spindle, the core of the spindle is always at the center and you minimize the tool wear and you, uh, you have a very good dampening with that, uh, with that solution. So the hy hydrostatic, how, how does that work? Is it, is, is it a, a bigger bearing? Is it got, uh, you know, just tell us about how that's made up. So it's basically a, a, a bearing, a hole with a uh, with small pocket in the, uh, in the middle and we push basically oil that has been filtered. We use cutting oil so there is, no, uh, there is not a different oil to be, uh, to be taken care of in the, in the machine. We just simply use the, the cutting oil that we filter quite nicely in this, in this machine, the container of the, of the machine, and we push this, this oil under high pressure into those bearings. So, and therefore with the pressure you are always at the center, whatever you do with, uh, with, your, uh, with your machining. Is this pretty unique to Tornos? Is there many other multi-spindles that offer a, a similar uh, construction in that area? Well, you will find on the market other, other products uh, that, uh, that use hydrostatic technology for sure, but that's for the moment the, the, the only one who use uh, hydrostatic bu guide bushing. And that means um, you hydrostatic bearing, sorry. And that means you get better tool life as well. And you mentioned yes. to me earlier about a thirty percent potential improvement in in tool life. Yeah, we have seen uh, we have seen a lot of examples like that. Some examples, depending on the condition, you you are you will have a little bit less than that or a little bit more. But that's that's what, what we get basically. Yes. All right. And then this machine again, great to see here with with all the guarding off because we can see that we've got a base of the machine here. Uh, then we have obviously what, what what would be almost like the column of the machine, yes. isn't it? How are the two attached are they, are they just um, uh, metal to metal or do, or do you do it differently no we have a special dampening system that uh, that allow us to get uh, to get to the precision and to uh, yeah to have basically good quality part of the, out of the machine to absorb to absorb the, vib the vibration and so on okay so that coupled with what we talked about about the hydrostatic gives mm -hmm. will give you a lot better quality of part so these are your six spindles here we can see this going together this is obviously the the area where the, the, the tools are attached to is that correct yes it is yeah correct okay and all this is going together here we've obviously got uh, the pipe in here which is, is secure because you have high pressure cool uh, high pressure oil going through these two Indeed, indeed, and what is what is good is that it's all integrated into the slide, and therefore you don't have tube and so on in the in the machining area, and you minimize the risk for the chips to get stuck somewhere with that. And that's two things that you mentioned to me earlier as well about chip removal is key, isn't it, on this type of machine because you're really producing swarm, and secondly, reducing tool wear, which you do with the way this is is made up. Let's just walk round. Uh, let's just walk round this side here. As we kind of look into the, let's say the insides of the machine here, uh, Brees, this is where all the, the bar will come through, correct? That's, that's indeed correct, yeah, sure. And is there any differences here with how you uh, load the bar, feed the bar, Brees? Yeah, well, here we use a very simple system. In fact, we just push the bar into the first spindle, the feeding position, and we, have, we use basically the axis of the machine to, uh, to, to, ma to make the actual feeding. As Florian has, um, has explained to you, we, make, we grip the bar with an, uh, with an hydraulic system, and then we use the z-axis of the spindle to actually make the, make the feeding. So it's just a push bar. It's not even, I don't think we can even call it a bar feeder. It's just a bar pusher. And I think what's impressive about the Tornos uh, machines here is that everything is fully integrated, isn't it? The, the, the bar loading, mm -hmm. also the, the swarf extraction, the, uh, uh, the parts catcher, it's all, all in one nice compact unit yeah, yeah that's a comprehensive solution and you have a, you have a, really a machine in a in a kind we can i think we can call it a turnkey solution uh, let, let's walk back to the to the front of the machine here obviously the gentleman's working on on what we class as the the second spindle um if 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 we're looking at this second spindle here is this for the final operation the one that he's working on it is it's the counter oper it's the counter spindle uh, it's basically to, to, to machine the last, uh, the last uh, side of the part you, you, are, you are actually machining. 
And everything we see here, is this all made here at Tornos in Mutier, where we are today? I mean, obviously we can see the assembly line, but are you making all these components here? Is everything done here in Switzerland? It is made in Switzerland, yes. We, uh, I mean, what you can see is really the, the heart of our, of our product. Uh, and that's uh, that's key component that we would like to, uh, to, keep, uh, to keep manufacturing them by ourselves to, to maintain the, the quality required. A lot of work going into this. I mean, you look at the complexity of the machine. How long would it take you to get one of these machines through this assembly line? We can deliver in six weeks such a machine. Okay, so all of this goes together in six weeks. Obviously, yeah. there's, there's, it doesn't mean you can deliver a machine from point no. of order in six weeks because there's a lot of work that goes on with these machines in terms of turnkeys as well. Mm -hmm. Would the majority of these machines that you're selling here go into maybe the automotive industry, the watch industries, uh, and do they, do they need uh, turnkey support so you actually program the parts here for them and do runoffs? Yeah, well, we do have uh, we do have uh, a lot of uh, of project going on. Uh, we do have project in the, the automotive, in the uh, the electronic business, and also in the in the watchmaking, indeed, for this uh, for this for those machines. And uh, we have the two type of customer. We have customer who just place repeat order and they just want the machine, and they they, they are going to do the setup by themselves. But we are also able to to support the customer really till the end of the process and really manage the project for them. It means they are coming with a drawing, they are coming, coming with challenges, and uh, we work hands in hand with the, the, the customer to actually meet those, uh, those challenges. And it's great to see the quality of the machine that's being built here. Um, and, and some of the, the kind of what we class in the UK as barriers to entry with multi spindles are they take a long time to set, they're difficult to program, but actually all of those are myths, aren't they, as we've learned today. Actually, these machines can be set in just a couple of hours to run production parts and also be programmed within a matter of minutes. Yeah, that was uh, that was basically the basic of the of the multi Swiss project to have actually a multi uh, a multi spindle machine that is easy to program that is easy to handle because that was the, the biggest barrier for the for the for the customer to enter into this world and uh, what we have tried to do here is to 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 bring that to bring the multi spindle technology to to everyone. And now you do up to the 32 mil with the new uh, 630, uh, 632, don't you? Which is obviously a good addition to your range. It is. It is. Now we covered really a, a wide range of uh, of diameter with those machines, and uh, with the the 8 by 26, we have really a machine that is able to make a rather complex part, despite having a very easy to use and uh, functional layout. It's great to be able to bring this to our viewers. Thank you very much, Brice, uh, for taking us around this uh, assembly area. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.